spaceship landing? <laughs> yeah, it does sound weird, doesn't it? And hang on, let me shut that off. What was that? That's AC welding. That I'm playing with some aluminum, trying to get used to my new uh, uh, Everlast Power TIG 255 EXT over here. Just trying to get my head around this advanced pulse, advanced AC pulse they have on this thing. Uh, it's taken, it's taken AC on the high side of the pulse, and then it's dropped into a negative DC. That's cool. <laughs> That's really neat. I wonder how they do that. So what they get is a quick freezing puddle and more definition on the on the puddle ripple. And it's good for controlling the uh, the cleaning width. You know, like you would do with AC balance, where well, you get you get some help here with the pulse also, and then it really really helps on the thin stuff on the thin aluminum. But what I was wanted to do today, I was just playing with this. You know, I'll talk about this in another video. But what I wanted to do today was let's just go to DC. Let's do some some heavy. I got some quarter inch plate. Let's let's you know crank up the amps a little bit and see how it does. And then I've got some little 16 gauge here. Let's see how low we can go. Limbo, baby. Low, baby. So <laughs> let me move this out of the way and put my helmet on, and we'll have some fun. So I got a couple pieces of a quarter inch plate. You know, clean them up a little bit and just kind of butter them together, clamp them down. And I'm going to be running the water cool torch with the eighth inch E3 tungsten. Almost to a point. Got a little flat spot on the end of it. But here, come here. Let me show you the machine real quick. I'll show you how it's set up. About 125. We'll start there. See how it looks. And it's just set on normal setup. DC welding. 4T. So my trigger works on the torch. And the pulse is shut off at this time. So come on back to the bench and we'll see how it works. Okay, so let's fire up this thing and so working on this quarter inch plate. Got a little puddle going there. But after just a tiny little bit there at 125 amps, I can see nah. Let me go turn that up a little bit more. I'm gonna bust bump it up to about one 140. Let's see what we get there. A little puddle starting. Feed in a little. Yeah, higher. Okay, so let's try it at 170 amps. That's better. Puddle started nice and quick. I can see it's getting down into the metal. No, it's chewing its way down through that plate. Got a little gap to fill right here. But we'll just feed it a little more. So here's where I did 125. This was at the 140, I think it was. And then this was at 170 here. And as I was welding the 170, I could see it... Uh, chewing down into the metal nice. You know, it was getting uh, about an eighth of an inch, a little over, you know, worth of penetration down into the metal. So, getting down in there real nice. You know, higher amperage, very nice. So, I'm going to change the torch real quick. I'm going to take off the water cool, I'm going to put on my air cool, and then we'll try the bottom end of the scale and see what it does down there. Now this is my air cool torch that comes with the machine also and I've got a little 1 16th E3 in it down to a point. We're just going to light it up on a piece of 16 gauge all the way down to the bottom. Let's see how low we can go. So come on back to the bench. Okay, so I got the machine set down to 4 amps and we're going to just go ahead and light up a little bead here and let's see if we can get it down even lower than 4 amps. Okay, well, let's try four amps and see what we get. 
Boy, that is a little tiny yard right there. Okay, so that four amps was a little too light. I couldn't get my helmet to stay dark. So I bumped it up to five. Let's try it there. Boy, that is a tiny, tiny little arc. Smallest one I've ever used. Okay, now that was tiny. I, I've never, I've never ever seen an arc that tiny before. Uh, couldn't really do any welding with it. I, I'm just not used to working that low, that you know, that low on the amperage. And my helmet kept flashing on and off on me, so I'd, I'd have to go back to a, a regular fixed lens helmet, you know, instead of the auto darkening helmet, to be able to work that tiny. But wow, you know, from four amps, you know, five amps, all the way up to you know, 170 amps. I've tried it up at 250 amps, but I need to go one step bigger on my tungsten because it was starting to melt the, the eighth inch tungsten. So I'd have to go a little bit bigger than that to try to get to the upper end of the machine. Did you get penetration on the five amps? Well, uh, well. No, no, I didn't. You know, it, it, it started to melt it a little bit. But when I tried to add a little of the, the 16, you know, the 1 16th filler rod, I tried to add a little bit of that in there. You know, the, the 1 16th filler rod was actually bigger than the arc that I was getting off of the end of the tip. So a little smaller filler rod for working, you know, that, that tiny, tiny, tiny. Uh, a lot more practice for me on that. You know, this is, this is my fault, undoubtedly. This is just inexperience on my side. You know, the machine obviously is capable of making it and holding it, keeping an arc that small. I've just never worked that tiny before. So, more practice. Yep. I'm going to play with this some more. You know, next time maybe we'll talk about the, uh, the advanced pulse and play with the AC side of it some. So, let me go back to what I'm doing. See you later.